Hey guys, what's up? So I just finished watching WWDC and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I did not have very high expectations going in. This last year, at least this last year, hasn't been the greatest for Apple. There were lots of broken AI promises, a totally neglected iPad Pro, lackluster iPhone and iPad updates. I mean, Mac computers still are pretty dope and the new Mac mini was a breath of fresh air in an otherwise stale and may I say disappointing year for Apple. So I honestly didn't know what to expect. However, I was still silently hoping for this keynote to bring some unexpected surprises because I do really feel that this next year will be a make or break year for Apple. They've fallen behind the curve pretty far and I'm not sure whether they'll be able to catch up. And while I don't think anyone was blown away with what Apple presented today, it wasn't all bad and there are definitely some things to look forward to. Let's ramble. Hold up, please go by when I pull up. They all on me like at once. So yeah, lots of updates across platforms, across the entire ecosystem, if you will, starting off a bit meh, but hang in there because like I said, there is some good stuff to share and we'll be saving the best for last. Right, at the start of the event, I was getting ready to throw a shoe at my computer because Craig uttered the phrase, and we delivered all this, referring to Apple intelligence. Excuse me? Delivered what exactly? Delays? Yeah, those were well received. Anyway, the big one, as Craig called it, for this event is a complete redesign of the operating systems across the board on all devices, and they haven't really done that, or at least not in a meaningful way, since iOS 7. The new design is called Liquid Glass, describing the way everything looks, but also the way it responds and feels translucent and fluid. On the iPhone, it means elements are redesigned for rounded devices. And because they're translucent and they adjust to whatever else is on your screen, the elements will sit on top of your apps, but in a less intrusive way. Things shrink as you scroll, pop back into their original size when you stop, and icons are made of layered liquid glass, as they call it. The iPhone's lock screen also looks like a layer of liquid glass that you then swipe away to open it. Wallpapers and fonts reshape as things move on your screen, which makes everything look a lot more dynamic. They implemented a new 3D effect in images, and the music Apple have new album art, which honestly looks a bit like Spotify in my opinion, but hey, I like the way Spotify looks, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. The camera app also becomes more swipey, if you will, relying more on gestures to navigate the controls. And Apple seems to have gotten the memo regarding the Photos app, and it looks like the updated version will bring it back a bit to what we're used to before, so it'll suck a little less. I mean, a redesign of the OS is of course not the most exciting thing, but if it makes using the iPhone feel fresh and new again, I'm here for it. Apple also chose to end the current naming convention of the operating systems. Instead, it will name the versions based on the year they will be used, in this case, iOS 26, rather than iOS 19. I did actually get mildly excited about the new Apple CarPlay announcements. CarPlay will no longer be confined to the media console as we're used to, but it will span across the entire system, the entire dashboard, if you will. There will be new widgets and the liquid glass design that we talked about will also be adopted in CarPlay, which means we can expect to see more small, non-intrusive, little interactive overlay buttons and icons that don't block the screen. Incoming calls, for instance, will just come in on top of your navigation screen in a way that will still allow you to see what you're doing. With that said, CarPlay Ultra, as they call it, will only be available in select new vehicles, so don't expect to update your current car with the full new suite of features. What's cool about this, though, is that we will be able to control a lot of the features of the actual car from within CarPlay Ultra. I do look forward to seeing that in the future. It does look pretty great, to be honest, but it also is another way of keeping us trapped in the good old ecosystem, as none of this will obviously work without an iPhone present in the car very smart. The phone app will be getting some pretty useful updates. Apart from a new layout, of course, we will also be getting AI voicemail summaries and call screening. Now that last feature actually looks really useful to me. You can basically have your phone answer the unknown caller and have it request information from the caller so you can then decide whether you want to take the call or not. So if it's a scammer, they're not gonna give their information and you can just discard it. Great way of filtering out those scammers and annoying call center agents. Also a promising new feature is Hold Assist, which detects hold music on a call. So it basically knows you're on hold, it'll hold the call for you so you can go about your business and once a live agent has arrived, you get a call so you can join the conversation. So no more sitting next to your phone waiting for that music to end, you'll just get a call. 
The Messages app gets a new option to change backgrounds, which looks an awful lot like features we already had on WhatsApp. For ages, you can take polls from within the group chats to help everyone agree on things like a time and a place to meet up, which is a little bit like Doodle, but it's just nice to have all of this in one place now. You don't have to go out, use another app, it's just all there in the chat. We will also be able to use Apple Cash from within the group chat and request, send and receive money right from within the chat. And wait for it, we're getting typing indicators so you can see who's typing, hallelujah. It's good to see though that the Messages app will also get screening tools, which will help us detect spam messages and other nasty stuff as well, just like on the phone calls. So guys, with iOS 26 bringing pretty powerful new features, it's a good idea to get yourself a charging solution that ensures you get the best results possible. ESR's three-in-one magnetic charging station with the patented Cryo Boost cooling technology will do exactly that by actively cooling your iPhone to maintain stable high-speed charging. It delivers up to 90 99 minutes faster charging than other Qi 2 chargers and it is fully ready for the upcoming iPhone 17 as well as future iOS updates. And being a 3-in-1 charger, it'll charge your AirPods and your Apple Watch as well. It charges an Apple Watch Ultra four times faster than the standard 2.5 watt chargers. And since we're upgrading our accessories, why not throw in the perfect case to use with this powerhouse of a charger? If you're a regular to the channel, you already know that the ESR Classic Hybrid case has been one of my favorites of all time the camera guard doubles as a stand making it super convenient for watching content playing games or you know just to do some browsing and i love that they chose the camera guard to do this because it keeps the magnet ring free for charging by the way the strong magnetic lock offers 1500 grams of magnetic strength which is more than twice as strong as apple's own cases so when i snap my iphone onto this cryoboost stand that thing ain't coming off a nice bonus feature is that it has an actual conductive camera control button not just some simple cutout. So guys, if you want to pick these up for yourself, there will be links in the description below the video. Moving on to Apple Intelligence. Now guys, please forgive me, but I refuse to waste your time talking about Genmoji updates. If you must know about that, you're going to have to find that part of the keynote yourself. I ain't doing it. What was interesting though, is the newly announced live translation features. This is the type of stuff I believe AI should be used for on our devices. It works a bit different depending on the platform you're using. Messages are translated as you type. FaceTime will be getting live captions, but phone calls will actually be getting out loud translation. So I can speak in my own language and the person on the other side will hear what I said in their own language and vice versa. And the other person doesn't necessarily need to have an iPhone. I'm wondering how that will work in practice though, since it will inevitably cause delays in the dialogue. And especially in the beginning when people are unaware of the feature, I can see that causing some awkwardness on calls. But anyway, it does look cool and I do look forward to trying it. Apple announced a couple of improved services on the iPhone as well. Apple Music will get live lyrics translation, lyrics pronunciation, so you can pronounce your Korean songs, and a new audio mixing feature, which actually looks pretty cool. It does beat matching, so you can transition from one song to the next seamlessly, kind of like a DJ. Maps will use AI to learn your routines as well and give you better context to where suggestions, and you will be able to easily search places you've been. Of course, you can also delete these if you don't like the idea of someone knowing exactly where you've been all the time. I guess that depends on your relationships. The wallet app will be improved as well. You'll be able to keep digital car keys, driver's license, and your digital ID in there, which I think is super useful. But of course, this will only be available in the US and only in certain states, at least in the beginning. A feature I can see myself using a lot though is the more interactive boarding passes. They will now include things like maps for the airport, find my features within the boarding pass, and a shareable status so you can let your loved ones know how your journey is going. Visual intelligence lets you use the camera control button to get information about things you're seeing, but you can also now use visual intelligence on your phone across apps to find information on anything on your screen, which kind of looks like Samsung's circle to search, to be honest. But yeah, useful feature nonetheless. WatchOS has a few updates. It gets the same liquid glass redesign, of course, and we're getting our very own workout buddy. Based on AI, your personal coach will be there to motivate you and help you achieve your goals. The lady in the presentation was super crushing everything, so she was being showered by compliments. I wonder what happens though when I go running after another McDonald's binge. What will it tell me then? That last run was You need to do better, 
You can now let AI put together playlists for you and you can receive context-aware information in what Apple calls a smart stack. The new wrist flick feature to respond to these notifications does look really dope. Notes will be coming to the Apple Watch as well, which I actually think can be super useful. It'll make it a bit easier to just do a little note to self when something pops up, you know? Now I'll keep it very short on tvOS, mainly aesthetic changes and some new Apple Music features for those of you who like karaoke. You can now use your iPhone as a microphone. Now we are slowly getting to the meat and potatoes. Mac OS is getting some substantial updates. The new OS will be called Tahoe. And of course, it will feature the liquid glass design language. With the transparent menu bar, a more elaborate control center, and we can customize folders, including giving them different colors, which I can actually see being super useful. You can also customize everything to give the Mac like a unicolor look, which I think I might actually try because that does look pretty clean. Live activities will now be visible as overlays, kind of like on your phone. Like if you order something on Uber Eats, you'll be able to see a little overlay keeping track of your order and you will be able to see and control iPhone apps straight from your computer. Also, big changes in the way we use shortcuts. It will become a lot more intuitive to create them and we can include intelligent actions, which basically means including AI features in your shortcuts recipes. The biggest update, in my opinion, in macOS is Spotlight. We will now be able to cast a way wider search net using Spotlight and we can even carry out actions from within Spotlight. We will be able to use keyboard shortcuts to trigger specific actions and we can use Spotlight to search within apps, which I believe has great potential. For example, you can search the background removal feature in preview and then immediately apply it too. It'll save you a lot of digging in the menus of these specific apps. Vision OS gets some updates too for the five people that own one of those. They are mainly visual updates as you might expect. You can also pin like windows and widgets so they show up exactly where you left them kind of like the Meta Quest has been doing for a good while now, but okay. And personas will now look a little less creepy, so your avatar might not scare small children anymore. Now, guys, admittedly, this event was beginning to feel a little bit like a snooze fest, but thankfully, Apple managed to deliver at the end with the new and improved iPad OS. No, we're not getting Mac OS, finally making the maxed out iPad Pro worth the money, but we're getting a proper windowing system, which includes actual floating windows, but you can also choose to snap windows to even parts of the screen. And of course, you can also choose to keep using multitasking as you have been until now, if that's what you prefer. We're even getting expose on the iPad, just like you have on the Mac. So basically what Apple is giving us here is options. And that's not something I feel we've ever had on the iPad. A lot of Apple intelligence stuff from the iPhone will also be making it over to the iPad and we will be able to use the phone app straight from the iPad. Now that is a feature I can appreciate. Another much needed update is coming to the files app, which until now has been Satan's spawn and I don't know a single soul who doesn't hate it with a passion. But those days may finally be over now that we're getting a lot of features that we've been asking for for ages like list view, collapsible folders, custom folder icons, and we can choose which app we want to open the file with and even set default apps. You can also now drag a folder right into the dock so it's easily accessible accessible for you and from there you can drag your files straight into your open apps and as a little cherry on top preview is finally coming through the iPad. Guys, I'm genuinely looking forward to these new iPad features. There are some nice new options in terms of audio and video as well whereby you can select your own audio source. We can also use voice isolation across apps now and we'll be able to use the AirPods to record what Apple calls studio quality audio. So you can basically use your AirPods as Bluetooth mics. You can even use them to start and stop your recording. And if you're a creator and you use your iPhone or your iPad, that's really super useful. And lastly, background tasks will now show up as live activities. So you can carry on doing other stuff while keeping track of what is happening in the background. So guys, I was totally prepared to tear Apple a new one, but to be honest, there are enough features to get excited about and iPad OS really saved the day for me. This makes me wanna blow the dust off my iPad Pro and give it another shot to see whether this thing can now finally live up to its potential. Guys, I hope this little recap was useful for you. If it was, please give one of these. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.